eating insects. So why are we talking about insects? Well, the Natural History Store here at Torquay Museum houses approximately 120,000 insect specimens that have been collected from all over the world. Did you know that there are more than one million species of insects in the world? And we're discovering more and more each day. I mean, we couldn't possibly cover all of them in this short film. Now the study of insects is called entomology. And entomologists usually specialise in a particular group. For example, lepidopterists study butterflies and moths. There are lots of other groups. Here are some examples. Butterflies and moths. Bees, wasps, hornets and ants. Dragonflies and damselflies. Beetles, weevils, cockroaches, silverfish. Grasshoppers, crickets and locusts. Lacewings. Fireflies. True flies like the house, the horse and the blue bottle. Aphids, black, green and white fly. Mosquitoes, gnats and midges. Grey flies, otherwise known as dandy long legs. Stick insects, the praying mantis. Lice, fleas and ticks. Termites. And many others that we haven't mentioned in this list. Some animals aren't insects, everyone, like spiders, worms, slugs, snails, centipedes, and millipedes. So we won't be talking about any of those today. Insect identification. Most adult insects have a segmented body with a separate head, thorax, or chest, and abdomen. They have six legs attached to the thorax in three pairs. They sometimes have a very complex mandible adapted to particular food. They also have antennae on their head for sensing smell, humidity and wind direction. Most insects have a pair of compound eyes which are sensitive to the movement of predators or prey. Not all insects have wings. Metamorphosis Many insects change dramatically from something called a larval stage to the adult stage unlike other animals where the babies are mini versions of the adults they resemble. For example, you've got maggots changing into flies, naiads changing into dragonflies, and caterpillars turning into moths and butterflies using something called a chrysalis. So what is the largest insect? Well, the largest is a difficult thing to judge because some are long and thin and some are short and wide and some have a large wingspan. It's really tricky. I mean, in Australia, we have some of the largest insects like the giant burrowing cockroach, but many of the largest insects come from Asia and other parts of the world. For example, look at this. It's a North Indian atlas moth. Oh, just look at the size of this thing. It's almost as big as my head. And in New Guinea, they have some massive butterflies. Some prehistoric insects were larger. There's the griffin fly that lived more than 300 million years ago. It had a wingspan of 28 inches. Imagine that flying around while you're trying to eat your picnic. But the smallest insects you can see without a microscope include fairy wasps, pharaoh ants, pygmy blue butterflies, and scarlet dwarf dragonflies. We have some insects in the collection which are smaller than a full stop. Impressive insects. Most people think, ooh, creepy crawlies. It's true, there are some monstrous looking types. But another louse might find that very attractive. Many insects are very beautiful and they display a wide variety of colours and patterns. Obvious examples would be brightly coloured butterflies and dragonflies, but there are also many coloured beetles, for example red and yellow ladybirds, and bees and wasps aren't always black and yellow. There are blue carpenter bees and emerald wasps. Some have patterns for display or camouflage, and some insects can look like wood, twigs or leaves, like a stick insect or a moth. And imagine this, transparent, that means see-through wings, where the structure of the veins is visible inside in some butterflies and bees. That's the ultimate camouflage. You can see the background through the wings. Irritating insects. Destruction. Insects can be very annoying. They don't just eat your picnic. The Colorado beetle can devour potato crops, carrot flies devour carrots, and cabbage white caterpillars devour cabbages. And termites can eat your house, and wood boring insects such as woodworm and death watch beetle can eat your furniture. Hello, we're with Claire, one of the museum's curators. 
So Claire, we know that insects can be very destructive. Do any cause you problems in the museum? Yes, uh, a few insects cause problems in the museum. Um, we have issues with moths, which you might be familiar with at home, that eat clothing in our textile collections. And we also have problems with variegated carpet beetle, which we call museum beetle. And you can see that really well in both this lovely little budgie and this crab. You can see the little woolly bears coming out of the budgie's body and they're the larval stage of the museum beetle and it's those that eat um, the feathers and the feathers, a lot of the feathers on this one have all fallen out and we're not sure if that's savable unfortunately. Um, and on the crab it's eaten the chitin that's been holding its legs on and one of the legs has fallen off. Did you know budgies come from Australia? Importance of insects. Insects are useful as a food source for insectivores, that means insect eaters. Ant eaters, bats, many birds, frogs and toads, carnivorous plants, and some insects prey on other insects. For example, ladybirds will eat greenfly, dragonfly naiads will eat mosquito larvae. And what about honey? Not all bees make honey. Honey bees make honey and they make it from flower nectar for food. Silk. Did you know it takes 50,000 silkworms, that's the larvae of the silk moth, to make enough silk for one sari? And many species of insects are pollinators, not just the bees. Two thirds of the world's flowering plants require the help of insects to reproduce. For example, fig plants require fig wasps. Housekeeping. Insects break down matter or decompose it, including corpses, clothes and wood. And dung beetles break down poop. We need to protect all of the world's insects and not just the pretty ones. So many other species are reliant on them for food, for pollination and housekeeping. Guys, let that bothersome wasp out of the window and step carefully over the ants. And please, don't use pesticides and poisons in your gardens. Leave those green fly on the roses because it's food for the ladybirds. Insects make the world go round.